you hear me in the back? So I don't need the mic? Perfect. Uh, welcome for this session about documentation. I'm sure you all love documentation. You enjoy writing documentation, right? Let's do this. Two minutes or 30 seconds about myself. I'm Guillaume Chebel. I'm a software developer for Expedia in London. I'm an ASCII doctor contributor, but we're going to talk about that a bit later. A bit of uh, my blog, GitHub. I'm on Twitter as well. The Twitter handle is here. And now, a bit about you guys. Who is a developer here? Raise your hand, please. Ooh, nice. Who is an architect? No, oh, one architect. Nice. Uh, project manager. Don't be. That's all right. That's all right. We, we are not going to hurt you guys. Uh, who works in the product, product owner, this kind of, this side? No. Documentation specialist? Someone who's doing just that? No? Okay, mostly developers. That's cool. So you will be able to answer this question. What do you do, guys? No? No ideas? Ah, you write some code. I'm sure about that. Come on. That's the beginning. What else do you do sometimes? Hopefully. Test. test. Yes. You should write some tests. Who doesn't write any tests at all? Nice. That's good. Sometimes you create awesome features. That's really sometimes, for, at least for myself. I'm not doing that quite often. What else do you do? Something I'm sure you all do. all the Not all the time, but most of the time. No. So, no, 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 some people don't do that. <laughs> we all complain all the time, right? And sometimes, but we do write some documentation, of course. R documentation is kind of weird, as everyone, most, or most of us, hates writing down documentation, but we love complaining when the documentation is not right. <laughs> OK, we're on the same page. I like that. First question, where is my documentation? Do you know all in your companies, in your everyday projects, where exactly is your documentation? Who doesn't know that? <laughs> OK. The doc is not up to date. Always, always. I'm sure you have ever seen something like the documentation is uh, about version 1.2 of the project, but the current version is 2.3. That happens all the time because someone forgot to update it oh, once again. And that's just a small portion. That's just a few digits. What about a big portion of the code, like examples? I like having snippets of the code when I'm trying to use an API, a new library. But sometimes it's not up to date. It's like two versions before. What? Shouldn't happen. Oh, diagrams. I was used to work for, um, for a consulting company, and we loved UML diagrams and all the diagrams we can put. Therefore, no licenses. All the time, when I step into a project, say, hey, OK, we have to write down those beautiful UML diagrams, class diagrams, sequence diagrams, but no licenses. That's a pain. That's a pain. And of course, they will be writing down once, and never update it again. Again. Yeah, versioning. Uh, quick question. For those of you who have some documentation, which tool do you use? Microsoft Office or equivalent? Some of you, OK. Something like a wiki, Confluence, XWiki. Uh, what, what else can we have? Uh, Google Sites. Sorry? Google Sites. Google Sites, right? Or WordPress, the same kind. Yeah, some of them. That's painful. Do you, do you well, can you easily see, the, tell me the difference between one version and the other version? Like doing a diff. You know, git diff something. Have you ever tried to do a git diff against a doc, uh, Microsoft Office doc file? <laughs> Have fun. Have you ever tried to do the same thing with a WordPress or Confluence URL? Not that easy. Not that easy. Do you know which uh, spaceship it is? Apollo? No, it's not Apollo. 
It's part of the Apollo missions. You, I agree? Saturn, exactly. And what's funny about the, the Saturn project, so this rocket brought some people on the moon, basically. The thing is, if today we want to rebuild the exact same rocket, we can't. Why? Because the documentation is not accessible anymore. It's unreadable anymore. That's a problem. I'm not saying that our documentation for our projects will live like 50 years. Not saying that. But we are used to change, to switch to project, to technologies. So basically, the obsolescence of our documentation can happen in a snap. And that's a big problem. That's a really huge problem. Now I'm going to talk about ASCII Doctor. Who knows already about ASCII Doctor? A right. few of them, few of you, perfect. Uh, who knows about Markdown? I knew it, I knew it. So basically, uh, Markdown and ASCII Doctor are the same level. By same level, I mean in terms of syntax. It's a light syntax. Use your uh, text pad, VI, whatever you like to edit. That's perfectly fine. Then it, it differs just a bit in, with the syntax. Like instead of having hashes, you can have equal sign and so on and so forth. That's the beginning. But ASCII Doctor is way more than just about the syntax. It's a tool chain. The idea behind ASCII Doctor is to make you uh, capable of hacking your own documentation. That's very interesting. The, thing is, the problem with documentation now is we have the documentation on one site, Confluence, doc, uh, Microsoft Doc, or something else, and we have the code on the other side, GitHub, for instance. Why? Why? Who makes, who does code review? Code review. OK? I'm sure when you do code reviews, basically you, s you look at the code, you look at the test, right? And if a test is missing for a piece of code, you're going to go back to the developer and say, hey, can you, update your, can you add the test? Can you update your test? I'm sure you all do that, right? Do you do the same for documentation? No, because it's somewhere else. You will do it the first time, the second time, and you will forget about it the third time. Every time it happens this way. Because you have to switch. You have to switch to another environment to somewhere else. And that's a big problem. The idea here is we have a lot, we have automated a lot of things for our projects. We have version control, Git, CVS, SVN, whatever. Then we have continuous integration pipeline, Jenkins, for instance. And then we can push directly to production just from Git push. Why can't we do the same for documentation? Why with, if we with Git push, I go live with my project and I update the documentation of my project. Why not? We have some skills. We have some engineering skills, but we are not using it fully for this part of the project, the documentation. And that's really a problem. That's something we can, I still can help you with. So the idea here, once again, is to enable you to make you feel like, yeah, I can hack my own documentation. If something doesn't exist, write it down and then open source it, of course. Uh, ASCII Doctor being an open source project. So we have to go faster. We have to go a bit higher in our, with our skills. The, the thing is, uh, with WYSIWYG tools, we have been put in a frame saying, OK, that's the way to go to write down documentation. But why? We already figured that like for web development, putting the style in the HTML code is bad. We should never do that, right? We have CSS, we have less, we have whatever else. Why do we have to focus on the style when you write documentation? Why? Why can't you just focus at the first time on the content? What's important is the content, what you have to say, and not how, how you will display it. Will you display it in HTML, in PDF, in EPUB, whatever? That's another problem. Should the title be blue or green? That's another problem. It will be a, it will be a question. It, it needs answers, but later. First, focus on your content. That's really, really important. 
And then you can apply some skills, like when you're writing some code, most of the time, one statement, one line. Why don't you do that for documentation when you write something? Try, seriously, try it. One, uh, one sentence, one line. And then you will see a difference. It will bring you some stuff like, oh, I can switch two lines. That's easy. If, with one sentence per line, that's really easy. Then if at the rendering phase, the sentences should be next to each other, like a paragraph, that's possible. But when you write it down, one sentence, one line, that's really interesting. And then with that, as I mentioned before, you can basically do diffs with your documentation. When you do code reviews, you read the documentation. Oh, you've updated here. You updated a test. You've updated the code. And that's a good pull request. That's a good contribution to a piece of code. Where everything, all, the, all parts of the projects are updated at the same time. That's really important. So now we have opened our minds, say, OK, we've seen the problem. We can work efficiently. We can stay focused. That's really important. You don't need to switch all the time going back and forth with tools you don't like. I don't like using Microsoft Word or whatever else because I'm used to my IDE. I'm working like 10 hours a day on my IDE mostly, right? So I can stay there and focus on what's important. Drawings. Those drawings have been rendered using ASCII Doctor. So ASCII Doctor is generating the, the drawings and using Plant2ML or uh, GraphViz here for the specific syntax and everything. But I can still, I, I can show you the, the sources. It's readable. It's, when you write down, when you are, you are in a meeting, you take some notes, you will do the same way with ASCII Doctor. Like you want to make a list, just make some stars. It will create you a list. You want to write down something like this, just create some nodes on, on your piece of paper or in your ASCII doc file, and that's what you can render. That's easy. You will see it's pretty readable and affordable. So how to use ASCII doctor? ASCII doctor, it, the first part is in Ruby. Uh, it's a gem. Gem install ASCII doctor. That's easy. And then we have all the hacking around, all what you can use, ASCII Doctor J. If you want to use inside of your uh, inside of your project ASCII Doctor in the Java world, in the JVM world, perfect, go for it. Groovy DSL ASCII Doctor JavaScript is great. So basically, you can give ASCII Doctor JS a piece of ASCII Doc syntax, and it will render it for you. And then we can go further. Now we know we, we, can, re, we can reuse a simple in input and having some very interesting outputs, we can hack on it. Basically, this, um, this presentation has been made with ASCII Doctor because we have created ASCII Doctor Reveal JS and we can create our own backends. And then you can go further. If uh, something I tried, I will show you later, Confluence. We have ASCII Doctor Confluence which wraps ASCII Doctor and then publish into Confluence. That's something I tried to hack just using the REST API and that's easy. And then you can create your own converter. You can create your own um, macros. For instance, quick example, in your documentation, you want to create the change log and say, okay, we've resolved this Jira, this Jira ticket and this Jira ticket. You can first copy the link but you can even go further and say, create your own macro, Jira, colon, colon, one, two, three, four, five, and it will create for you the, the link of the specific Jira. That's very interesting. You can even inject some attributes. For example, uh, the POM, the version in the POM file, you can easily extract it, inject it on the fly in your in ASCII doctor, and so basically the version number in your documentation will come from the POM file. And usually the POM file is quite up to date, right? Or from Gradle, it works the same way, of course. And based on that, now we can 
again, how we can create some stuff, we can do a lot of things. By default, we have HTML5 publishing, so static web page, easy. Dogbook, who knows about Dogbook? So Dogbook is uh, an XML syntax, an XML processor, then we'll then generate HTML, single page HTML, multiple page HTML files, uh, PDF, whatever, like JBoss is, is used to use that for a long time with Hibernate, with a lot of their project. And they've switched to ASCII Doctor because of that. Because we can now have a simple syntax as an input and then generate Dogbook, which is really awful, it's pretty hard to maintain. And then they can keep going with their tool suite, right? So now we can do some stuff. PDF, we have ASCII Doctor PDF to, to do that. Uh, EPUB, if you want to write down some mobile thing. Exam uh, again, example with the mobile. Uh, there is a small company in France called Ninja Squad. They've written their book, a book about Angular, a JS, in ASCII Doctor, and they are publishing their own book on their own website. That's perfect. You don't need to have a publisher now. No one will buy a on one. But now people are not buying any more technical books on Amazon or in your library. You go online, you take the EPUB or, or the PDF or whatever, and that's it. So basically, you can do that. And there is another mini book with uh, ASCII Doctor for JHipster, which is a web framework made with ASCII Doctor by Matt, Matt Rebel. And then we have supports for DeckJS, DZ Slide, RevealJS, as you can see and whatever you want. Again, you can hack it easily, easily, easily. Integrate it to your project and then do what you want. And then you can go crazy. Like you can create a really rich uh, electronic management system for documentation with a bit of backend, something like um, Elasticsearch. You index the documents, you, you bring them back, run down the fly, push it back to the web. That's, that's really easy. And all you have as an entry point for your documentation is a simple text file. Very simple text file. I mentioned bit, Maven Gradle. Basically here, you add the, plug, the Maven plugin into your, uh, into your pump file or your, gra or your Gradle file. It was the same way. Then you can easily uh, configure it like inject creating some attributes, which are kind of variables, and uh, inject something coming from the pump. As I mentioned before, the version. That's really easy. That's something you can do, right? Grader works the same way. Where to start? OK. Now we have that. Package managers, uh, as I mentioned before, gem for Ruby. Apt-get, DNF for Fedora, that's easy. Then for Maven Central, you can get uh, the plugins for Maven Gradle, and you can get ASCII Doctor J, no problem with that. And the one I prefer, ASCII Doctor Docker, I prefer it because I've created it, uh, which is basically a Docker container with all the ecosystem for you. So you will have the, default, the most standard backend, you will have uh, ASCII Doctor itself. You will have everything directly in a container. And then you can just use it. I will show you in the demo in, the demo in two minutes. Who's using ASCII Doctor? Uh, JBoss, that's where I uh, learned about ASCII Doctor. I was a contributor in Hibernate OGM a couple of years ago. Uh, they moved to ASCII Doctor. Uh, Groovy has moved all their documentation with ASCII Doctor, and that's really interesting because every piece of code you will see in the Groovy documentation comes from that test suite. So you can easily put two lines in your code, say tag, this is my, my, the beginning of my tag, this is the end of my tag, and then reference this tag into your documentation, and so basically it will come directly from your code. So you, that's, a, that's a good start. That's a very good start. You know that every code you have in your documentation now is up to date. That's cool. 
something else you can do, and that's what Spring, uh, Spring REST doc is doing. They generate every piece of code and every part of the documentation from the code itself. So you can create on the fly some ASCII doctor file, put them together at the end, and render them. Advantage here, you know that the code you have in your, um, in your documentation passes the, the test suite. And that's really interesting. So you know again you're up to date. That's very important. And then you can just focus on the pros. You can focus on the, the, the explanation, but not on the how. Always focus on the why and not the how. Like every piece of documentation, every piece of code, that's the same way. So you can do some crazy stuff like this. The idea be behind ASCII Doctor is we have ASCII Doctor here in the middle, and then we have created some, uh, some endpoints, ex some extensions, docbook, epub, html. That's the beginning. But then you, we can go further. We can connect two words. We can take the confluence word here. And so confluence allows me to inject via the API some HTML. ASCII doctor allows me to generate some HTML. I just need to push. Easy. And that, again, could be part of my tool chain, my, my uh, continuous integration system. Right? I can have a job or part of my, uh, my main job doing that. So OK, now the next step after the build is to build a documentation, push it. Where's the problem? And you can do it in every format. So if you have some people preferring PDF over HTML, why not? That's not a problem. And of course, you can customize the content. For HTML, we have a style sheet factory. For PDF, we have another kind of syntax. You will feel a bit of pain, I admit, at the very beginning when you have to customize it with your own brand, your own color, and, and everything. But that's once. Then you don't focus on it anymore. So, as every time, focus on what's important. Do you have some questions so far? No? I hope I'm clear and not, I haven't lost you. So let's see about, <coughs> about some demos. OK. Um, the Docker container. Here it started. Let me show you how it goes. Uh, here, basically, that's a shame. It's too, way too small. Uh, uh, way too large. Up. Oops, that's not my point. <coughs> so here, if I want to start, let, let's put it here. Uh, you can all see the, the the code. So if you say Docker run, and the name of the container is here, ASCII Doctor slash Docker ASCII Doctor. So you know you are running ASCII Doctor stuff. Uh, and then you can connect a file from your host to a, f to a volume in your container. And that's it. You can start, no problem. So that's what I did here. And oh, I have a code motion ad hoc. That's interesting. Let's put some stuff. And I will need your help as I don't have any idea what I'm going to put on this. Uh, code motion here. Let's see. Oh, a, a classic. Hello world. That's uh, with a, let's make it bigger. Syntax for something like a, a, a one a first level title. And then we can move to, I don't know, I want to have some uh, bold text here. If I want to make something in bold, just put some stars. And, and so on and so far. We can have something interesting as well, which is syntax highlighting. You can put some code here. Let me show you. Let's uh, do Where is it? Um, whoops. Not this one. Cancel. Uh, Demo.adoc. Yep. Here. So, yeah. Here's some Java stuff. And Oh, you can't see it. Yeah. So here, I just say source Java, and then it will 
reintend it if you want to. If you, you can use something like Halite.js, uh, Code Ray, Pigments to have some syntax highlighting, it works. There, no problem at all. Okay? And that's, that's really easy. So, what, as I mentioned before, what Groovy did, basically here in their, in their code, they have something saying, okay, include this tag coming from the source. And basically, an include looks like that. So this is my presentation. The presentation I just showed you, that's the source. That's really easy. So I have slides that are ad hoc. Then here I have some, um, some variables. I, I can even say, oh, if it's not defined, define it. So it can, it can come from the, the caller, like uh, your command line or whatever. That's easy. And something interesting here is, I can put comment in my code, in my documentation, as I do with my code. That's pretty interesting. So if I, I'm writing down something, I'm not sure I want to publish it now, or I need to explain a bit, but something like offline for people who, are, who have access to the source of the documentation, I can put some comment. Very easy. And then include some stuff. Um, oh, the graphs. I, such a shame, we, we can't see anything. I don't know if you see correctly here, but basically, you remember the UML graphs I showed you before? That's where they're come from. They're coming from. That's readable. It's not like some weird thing with like SVG inside. No, no, no. it's text. So if I want to, I can create something that'd be crazy with, I don't know, annotation processors that will follow all the steps of my code and then generate something like that on the fly. And so I can create UML diagrams on the fly with just a bit of tweak. That's something I, I know how to do because I'm a developer. I have this mindset to hack, to create something new. I have a need. I have a, tool, a simple tool here. Let's meet them. The graph I show you with the, uh, the ethanol uh, molecule, as simple as that, really. And so if you want to create something with uh, squares with, uh, or math formula, you can do it. There is a support for math, for mathematical formula. Like if you want, I, I don't have any example here, but yes, yeah, something with uh, square roots and everything. You can just put it here in a readable format, and then it will be rendered properly with something like, I think it's MATLAB. That's pretty easy, that's cool. Of course, as I show you, we can have, uh, we can include images. Uh, what else do we have that could be interesting? I can show you, uh, la, la, pa, pa. Uh, that, so, oh yeah, that's interesting as well. Here, so, let's print, uh, let's make it up. So here's a piece of source, XML. I can say, okay, for this file, take just the line between 24 and 36. And that's really interesting. So I can just take a piece of the code and put it there. And I can have, it, it can come from my big pump file or whatever. That's simple. Of course, if you need to, uh, to uh, if you update your source file, like uh, Maven complete build.xml here, you will just have to update the range. Of course, we can't help you with that. But what we can help you with is if, so here you can see source dir, which is a variable describing where you can find my, my sources. But whoops, what I can do easily is mm, if I have to use the same kind of syntax, like include source dir build few times. And if you had the same problem in your source code, what would you do? Refactor, Refactor and how? Extract it to variable, exactly. So we can do something here. I can say, I can take this for instance. Say this, like, uh, I don't know, build here. And then here, switch all that to build here. And I can refactor. Again, I'm using one of my developer skills here. And I can even go way further than that to be more explicit, to be very expressive. 
I can change that to a macros and having at the end something that will look like, um, I don't know, uh, include source maven, um, yeah, in include source, I don't know, yeah, maven. We can, we can say something like this. And this, if you want to, can create a source tag and do the include for you. You don't need to repeat yourself. And you can even go further and further and further. If you are in the JVM world, you can have a syntax parsing system and saying something like uh, include, I don't know, uh, Java, my class my method and that's it and you can oh you don't say it sorry here and basically it can go for you in the source code pass it say okay i'm gonna just take my method from my class that's pretty easy that's something we can do it will need a bit of coding i agree but try to do that with word Try to do that with confidence. Have fun. OK, let's see how, it, uh, how to render that. So go back to, where is it, where is it, where is it? Here, no. Uh, CodeMotion.ad hoc. Um, let's see, what can I do? Yeah, let's start with that. So I have CodeMotion.ad hoc. Go back here. Nothing besides code motion at ad hoc. I say ASCII doctor, and I have an HTML file. Easy. Let's go here. It should show me if it's the right the, the right one. Uh, is it the right one I've used? Most probably. No, it's not the same. Ah, I've used another file. I don't know where it is. Um, <laughs> let me find it. Uh, which one have I used? I have so many of them. Uh, demos, no, that's not the one. OK, I'm, I won't lose some time, definitely. So what I can do is uh, blah, blah. check the view. The uh, yeah, I, I can do that. Uh, uh, how to get the volume? F I can't remember. Haha, <laughs> that's the thing. Uh, yeah, okay, let me do it, do it this way. That's what, how to do it. Here. And so if I say, see, whoops, mm, bit of problem. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let present. CD, ASCII doctor, CD, where was it? Demos. Oh, there it is. Open. CodeMotion.html. That's not the one I thought it would be. Anyway, so this is a, so it's in French because it's a, the, the demo file I've used for DevOps friends. Anyway, the same principle here. Uh, that's what I did. Quick, syn so the syntax is simple. It's kind of nice. Then you can tweak it if you want to. Uh, again, we have the size sheet factory. Uh, here, if you want to put something, to highlight something, we have a syntax for it. The list, links, that's easy, right? That's pretty easy. Uh, what can we do now? Oh, yeah. Confluence. I keep talking about this one. Let's see if it still works. So I've created in a, from a Docker, Docker container a confluence from scratch. There it should be empty. If he wants, if it wants to wake up. Otherwise, it would be fun. 
And so in, I will just grab my script and show you. Here, do, 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 there. And you go back. OK. Ooh, that's because my Docker container is not up, probably. Or oh, the IP is, no, it's, not, it's the wrong IP. Yeah, they have changed, changed the IP recently. Mm -hmm. Put it here, there, and this is something a bit different, is that. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, it's all, uh, oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Woohoo! With the right line of code, that's awesome. Uh, so basically, can you see in the back? I'm not sure. Here. SQL Auto Confluent, it's a gem. Uh, the host name, the space, the title, uh, your credentials. Don't look at my password, it's pretty secure. Uh, and then it will create a new file for you. And hopefully, if I go back here, oh, we have code. Uh, ASCII Doctor is awesome. Yes, indeed. And it's the same sources. I haven't updated everything. I'm just saying, render it and push it somewhere else. Do something else. I can do something like, if I go back saying, I think it's part of the container, PDF, uh, code motion, ad hoc, here, and I have a PDF file. Some people really like PDFs all the time, like in, com in corporate world, say, oh, send me a PDF. Here it is. Send me, I want it published, I want it to be published online. Here it is. Again, that's pretty easy. That's pretty simple. And if you want to do something else, Feel free. Don't make don't put constraints. Don't put barrier in your documentation, in your writing skills. Embrace it and put your skills on top of it. And that's really cool. How much time do I still have? Seven minutes. Is there any questions so far? I can go further. Yeah. I have a question, but maybe it's best for for the end. If you wanna. Depends on you. I don't know Sphinx, sorry. Okay. That would be an easy answer. Okay. I don't know Sphinx. Uh, but if you know Sphinx, I would love to know the differences. Yeah, I, well, we use it. Maybe I'll talk to you later. Yeah, sure. Uh, let's go further with that. Something I love, it's called Uppress. Let me show you here. So I will run the, hope the Wi-Fi is working, so I can talk about this during in the back. Uh, that's someone from, there's been something that's been created. OK, so basically, now we have ASCII.js, we have Git. Why do we need something really complex to make a blog? And that's what Hubpress is doing, basically. With Hubpress, you can go online, connect with your GitHub credential. We don't saw anything anywhere. You can, you can uh, have a look. And basically, fork the project, and you have a blog. Just update, tweak two stuff, like in the, just to say, OK, it's a GitHub pages and, and everything. And then, as you can see behind me, Basically, you can have your own blog in five minutes, even less than five minutes, OK? So it's really easy. And then it will create, you, you can save some files if, you, if your post is not ready yet. You can then publish it. It will create the HTML, pu push it for you. And that's simple. Again, that's and very cool, right? And that's something I really like. And then you can go do whatever you want, whenever you want. Okay. Questions? Yeah. Uh, do you have uh, any resource for Visual Studio for? For Visual Studio? Uh, no, but it's open source, so you can contribute. I would love to see that. <laughs> of course, that's a simple answer. No, we don't have anything for Visual Studio. Um, uh, why not? I would love to to see AskDoctor.net. I'm I'm quite sure you can. So that's the way AskDoctor.j for Java is working. Basically, it's using, thanks to uh, the JVM and JRuby, it's using directly the gem. 
So I'm sure you can in .NET wrap some, uh, a gem into some .NET code and invoke it with all your .NET magic. Feel free, I would love to see that, definitely. Other questions? <coughs> yep. Is it possible to use uh, as, as the doctor inside the code, inside your code? Uh, like sure, as the Java doc? Yeah. Yes, ASCII doctor doclet. Uh, basically, so you write down some, instead of, uh, you write down some comments, as you would do with Javadoc, but using the ASCII doctor syntax, and then it will do the magic. But so have a look, yeah, ASCII doctor doclet. Or ASCII doclet, I can't remember the name, exactly. Something else? No? So that would be it for me. Uh, I'm here tomorrow, today, tomorrow, on Twitter. If you have any question about ASCII doctor, just put the hashtag ASCII doctor, and that's a good way to see us. Otherwise, ASCII doctor.org. Uh, and that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs>